On About Books, we delve into the latest news about the publishing industry with interesting insider interviews with publishing industry experts. We'll also give you updates on current nonfiction authors and books, the latest book reviews, and we'll talk about the current nonfiction books featured on C-SPAN's Book TV. Well, in this edition of About Books, we'll take you into the world of book festivals and take you behind the scenes of one of the country's largest. It's the Los Angeles Times Festival of Books coming up in April. But first, here's some stories from the publishing world. The state of Illinois is taking steps toward deterring book bans in the land of Lincoln. A recently introduced bill would deny Illinois libraries access to state-funded grants unless they adopt the American Library Association's Library Bill of Rights, or a similar policy that pledges that library material will not be removed because of partisan or doctrinal disapproval. The governor there, J.B. Pritzker, announced his support for this legislation. Now, according to the American Library Association, there were 681 attempts to ban or restrict library resources across the U.S., and over 1,600 individual titles were targeted in the first eight months of 2022. One other news item from the world of books, the independent bookshop Greenlight Bookstore announced this week that it was closing one of its two locations in Brooklyn. In announcing the shuttering of the Flatbush Avenue store, owner Jessica Stockton Bagnulo discussed the financial forces behind the decision, as well as the state of the bookselling industry. Here's some of what she had to say from a video she posted on YouTube. So first of all, here's what this isn't about. This isn't about Amazon destroying all bookstores or the fact that people don't buy books anymore. Amazon is an enormously problematic economic entity that causes harm not only to bookstores, but to cities and towns and workers and small business owners and the global climate. And we should absolutely continue to draw attention to that. But at the same time, the number of bookstores in the U.S. continues to grow and book culture and bookstores are diversifying and proliferating in beautiful ways. People value the experience of being inside a bookstore and having that unique and special moment. And they do buy books, lots of them, from bookstores. This also isn't about the union coming in and destroying all of our profits. RWDSU Local 1102 has given us the structure to have difficult conversations that we needed to have as a company. And we'd already been working on increasing wages for staff to pay folks something more like a living wage. So unionization isn't something that small businesses need to be afraid of. It's given us the opportunity to offer our staff things like health insurance that we would never have been able to do otherwise. The union will keep you honest in terms of what sustainability looks like for everyone in the company. And it's certainly not about the idea that Flatbush Prospect Lefferts Gardens doesn't need or deserve a bookstore. Every neighborhood, every family and individual needs and deserves access to books. And we will continue to work with the PLG Neighborhood Association and others to provide access to books in the neighborhood however we can, even without a bookstore location. So what is it about? Ultimately, it's about the fact that not every business model works in every situation. How could it? It's not that bookstores don't work. It's that the particular bookstore that Greenlight has been operating isn't working in this particular place at this particular time. We've tried for years, but we simply can't make enough sales in this location to cover the costs of operating it. And with our sales down across the board, the other income streams of the company can't continue to make up the loss. And that was Greenlight Books owner Jessica Bagnulo. The Flatbush Avenue store will close on May 14th. And now from bookstores to book fairs, the 28th annual Los Angeles Times Festival of Books takes place this year on April 22nd and 23rd. It's held on the campus of the University of Southern California. Joining us now is festival organizer, Ann Binney. So Ann Binney, give us the ABCs of the Los Angeles Times Festival of Books. When did it begin? It began in 1996. So we're in our 28th year um, and super excited for that. And how did it get started? 
Um, it was uh, it was started by the uh, editorial team um, at the time, the b- books editor and the the books team, um, and it was conceived as a gift to the city of Los Angeles, um, and it uh, was uh, started in that in that very first year. No one had any idea what it was going to be, and a rainy. April uh, weekend in Los Angeles, which was kind of surprising, but the sun came out and the people came out in droves. It was on the campus of UCLA and it was a huge success and it's been going uh, ever since. So you were at UCLA for several years, but you've moved over to USC in the recent past. Why is that? Yeah, um, well, we had, we were at UCLA for about 15 years, I think. Um, and then we, uh, you know, sort of just parted ways at that point. I mean, I think that um, we were looking to sort of be in a more central um, part of the city, more accessible to uh, to the Southern California as a whole. It's uh, USC is right in uh, the downtown area of Los Angeles. It's It's accessible from all um, sides, from uh, public transportation uh, and freeways, and just generally sort of easier to get to um, and centrally located. Um, and it's been a, a wonderful partnership. Um, I think we're in our 12th year. So, well, it, um, yeah. It's April 22nd and 23rd of 2023, two full days. How many people attend, do you estimate? We had 155,000 people last year. So it's a huge event, uh, a huge cultural event for the city. Uh, one of the biggest that uh, that we have. And um, yeah, so we're expecting, uh, we hope that uh, we're gonna get that many people again this year. We have a great lineup uh, to offer and we hope that people come out. And Book TV will be broadcasting from the LA Times Festival of Books again this year, as we have for many, many years. What are some of the logistics of putting together a book festival like this? Uh, Well, it's a several month process. um, And we start in October, um, usually, where we put out what we call a call for submissions to publishers um, far and wide. And we ask publishers to submit uh, their authors that have new books coming out. Um, And we usually look at books that are coming out in basically like in the fall of the of the prior year, uh, and then into the spring of this year, and that will be out by the festival in uh, in April. Um, so we start that in October and we start meetings with our editorial team. We work closely with our books, our books editor and uh, other folks on um, the LA Times editorial team that work in the sort of books and entertainment space, start having regular meetings, looking at submissions and start sort of inviting people and uh, formulating uh, panels. So we, we put the call out widely um, and then start sort of building building from there. How many authors are you expecting this year? Over 550. Um, so it's uh, it's getting up there. We're almost almost done. Um, but uh, yeah, it's I think when we're when all is said and done, I think we're going to be uh, at uh, over 550 authors. Well, Ann Binney, anybody who's organized an event knows that sure you can have the the people there. But there is so much work being done under the surface, tents, uh, security, et cetera, et cetera, correct? Oh, absolutely. We have a, yes, we have a, a, a team of people that, that build the whole thing out at USC. Um, our partners at USC, we have lots of people on campus who we work with all the different departments, as you said, from uh, security and transportation and and all the things that go into it to make sure that that campus is ready for uh, this this influx of uh, of people both in terms of all the exhibitors we have we have over 300 exhibitors from the community that are going to set up um, booths on campus um, and uh, and then bring in you know as we talked about bringing in all the all the authors so it's a it's a huge operational um, apparatus that uh, 
that uh, we're working on right now. And what's it been like to have a big university like the University of Southern California as a partner? Oh, they've been wonderful. Um, they have, uh, we work closely with them. We meet with them regularly. Um, as I said, we we work with all the various departments that uh, that work on this event in order to to have it take place on their campus. It's uh, it's a, a large campus, and we take up a good part of it with the event. Um, and they also um, have different. They have a stage uh, and a room that uh, that they also program. So we have an outdoor stage, a really wonderful outdoor stage where we have bands uh, and performances from USC um, students. Um, and then we also uh, have a panel room that uh, USC programs themselves and they feature professors uh, it, throughout the weekend as well, having conversations of importance to the community, to the university. Um, and so, uh, and then they also have another uh, stage uh, that's a slightly smaller stage where they have children's literacy events, readings, and different performances uh, for the community. It's called the Friends and Neighbors stage. Um, so they have a big presence in the programming as well. 100,000 people, 500 authors, the Trojan Marching Band. What does this cost and how do you oh. fund a festival like this? Oh my gosh. Well, it costs, it costs uh, a lot. <laughs> it costs well over a million dollars for sure, probably approaching a million five, I would say. Um, and we work with um, we work with different partners. Our, our sales team uh, is out there selling uh, event sponsorships. Um, and uh, so we we have partnerships that that uh, that come in that we um, that we work with to uh, both help program. We have different partnerships this year. We have a, a, a new um, sponsor that, that came in, Apple TV Plus, um, and uh, we're working with them on a program for one of their upcoming uh, television shows that's based on a Laura Dave novel called The Last Thing He Told Me. And Laura Dave, who's a best-selling New York Times best-selling author, Laura will be there along with the star of the show, Jennifer Garner. Um, and they'll be talking about the series and about the book to screen sort of process. Um, we have several, lots of other sponsors. The LA Public Library is a sponsor. They do programming both on our children's stage and on our LA Times and Espanol stage. So we work um, with sponsors to, um, to help us put this whole thing together. So Ann Biddy, let's go back to some of the authors who are appearing. Is it a, is it a California or a Southern California centric group of authors that you look for? Is there, is there that flavor to it? Uh, we definitely have a flavor, a, a California flavor. I mean, we have our uh, Los Angeles Times main stage, which is really features celebrity talent. And I would say, you know, and it, it's, it's across um, movies and television, music, um, and uh, so there's a lot of celebrity talent involved there. But beyond that, I mean, we do have some California focused panels, but it's very it's very wide. And we have authors who come from all over the country and all over the world. Actually, we have um, we we give a set of book prizes um, every year, which we're going to be in our 43rd year. And the book prize ceremony takes place on the Friday night, um, April 21st, and it kicks off the Festival of Books. And many of those authors that are finalists for the prizes um, will be in the festival. And they came; they come from all over the world, actually. So um, we it's it's very wide. So I wouldn't say that it's uh, strictly California focused. Now, when you reach out to authors, are you able to go beyond the big five? publishing houses? Do you look at some of the university presses, et cetera? Uh, we do. Yes, definitely. Um, we have uh, lots of um, smaller presses that uh, that are uh, involved, that have authors in the program. So yes, we, we definitely go beyond uh, the big five publishers. And if you had to give advice to somebody who wanted to start a book fair, what would be the first thing you would say to them? Oh my gosh, <laughs> that's a tough one. Uh, boy, 
I don't. I I don't know. That's. Uh, Do you know what? It's we're a, it's a, it, we're going to come back to that question okay. in just a minute. <laughs> no. But among the five hundred authors, you have a mix of fiction and nonfiction, correct? We do, yes. So we're covering um, we're covering all categories. So we have lots of fiction. I would say that fiction is probably our biggest category. Um, but we have uh, we have a children's a children's stage. So we have lots of picture book authors. Um, we have a middle grade and YA stage. So we cover um, cover middle middle grade and YA um, fiction and nonfiction. We have graphic novels. We cover um, science fiction, um, biography, history. And in fact, in the in the room where C-SPAN will be uh, broadcasting, I would say that most of the programming in that room is all nonfiction. So it really is in in political um, his, history, biography in in those categories. So it's very wide. We we try to to be very broad in in what we're doing. Yes, lots of public affairs will be on that weekend. Uh, lots of public affairs authors, politics, history, um, on Absolutely. book TV from the L.A. Times Festival of Books. You have an interesting author coming out this year, who goes by the name of Selena Montgomery. Who is that? Selena Montgomery. Oh, would that be would that be Stacey Abrams? Yes, it would. Yes, it would. <laughs> yes, it would. Um, yeah, we are so excited to have Stacey joining us. Um, and she's going to do two events. She's coming out um, uh, for her picture book. Um, it's called Stacy's Remarkable Books, um, and it's a it's an adorable picture book that's somewhat autobiographical, as you can tell from the title. And uh, she's going to do an event on our main stage, and then also on our children's stage. So we're very excited to have her. And Benny, what's your background when it comes to books? How long have you been I working on this, and et cetera? Yeah, I come from publishing. I um, graduated from college. I went to UCLA. Graduated, went right to New York and started working in publishing um, as my first job. So I've done publicity, I've done sales and marketing and advertising. I started working at the Festival of Books, um, gosh, in about 2006 as a contractor, working on the programming and um, have been doing it ever since. So I've, I've both worked on the festival of books, and then I also uh, managed the book prize program for several years, which still falls under uh, my purview. So I've worked in and around publishing for my whole career. And when it comes to that book prize, how do you choose? Do you have a panel choosing the winners? We do. We have actually we have we give 14 prizes away and we have uh, 12 panels of judges um that are that are comprised of like three uh mostly three judges each we have one panel our isherwood uh christopher isherwood prize which has five judges but so we um we work with uh the judges year round to supply them with books um and to manage that whole process so we have judging uh, judging panels that read all year and then culminate in uh, the prize ceremony that uh, is going to take place on April 21st. So let's go back to that question. What's your advice to someone who wants to start a book festival? And I know the Tucson Festival of Books got started after visiting the LA Times Festival. Right. Yes, they did. Um, and they've got a wonderful fair that just took place um, a week or two ago, I think. And uh, I know it was ex it very successful. So it's it's wonderful to see how how uh, how they've grown over the years. Um, gosh, I, I still what would it what what does it take to start a uh, to uh, to start a festival like this? I would say it takes a great team of people that are that are committed um, to working this from the ground up and figuring out uh, where it's going to be and, and what it's going to look like and how big it is going to be. And I would I would say to um, start small <laughs> um, and and, you know, really sort of learn like what you're doing and, and how to do it and then uh, grow from there, um, which it, which is what the L.A. Times Festival of Books did. I mean, that first book fair, I was. 
I was at the first book festival at UCLA and I was there as a sales rep for Putnam. And I remember it very well. Um, and it was, you know, again, it was it was such a surprise and a delight to see how many people came out and how hungry the community of Los Angeles was for an event like that. Um, and and we have grown, you know, uh, over the years to to what we are today, this this huge event that takes up most of the USC campus and, and brings in hundreds of thousands of people. Um, but it took us uh, it took us a while to get to this point. So um, I would say to to be patient and to, um, you know, just to 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 work hard and uh, and mine all those uh, all those contacts in in, in publishing to uh, to put on a great event. Does it cost money for people to attend? Uh, it is it is free um, to uh, to attend, and all the outdoor events are free. We have six outdoor stages, um, and all the booths and and all the things that you can do outdoors are free. Um, the indoor events um, require a reservation, and there's just a small fee for uh, a small reservation fee uh, to reserve an indoor seat um, at a panel, and we have. Um, a couple of events that have a uh, ticket cost. Um, and one of those is um, Laura Dern and her mother, Diane Ladd, will be at the festival this year for their brand new book. It's actually coming out on April 25th. It's called Honey Baby Mine, and it's a memoir by the two of them, mother-daughter memoir. They're gonna be in conversation with one of our journalists. And that is what uh, falls into our ideas exchange series that's a series that we actually do throughout the year it's conversations with um with you know thinkers and authors and people from entertainment and politics um and so that particular event um is a, a 20 dollars ticket to um go and watch them talk or a 60 dollars ticket that includes a signed book um so outside of of those kind of ticket of ticketed uh large events like that um Everything else is free at the festival. The Los Angeles Times Festival of Books held on the campus of the University of Southern California, April 22nd and 23rd of this year. Book TV will be there as well and we'll have book bags. So if you're there, stop by and say hi. And Benny, we appreciate your time and we'll see you on the 22nd. Thank you so much. Looking forward to seeing you, Peter. Take care. And you're watching and listening to About Books, a program and podcast produced by C-SPAN's Book TV. Well, each Tuesday, dozens of new books are published, and here's a sampling of some of those. David McCormick, who was a 2022 Pennsylvania Senate Republican candidate losing to Dr. Oz, is out with a new book this week. The book is entitled Superpower in Peril, A Battle Plan to Renew America. And it's coming out at the same time that the newspaper Philadelphia Inquirer is reporting that Mr. McCormick is hiring campaign aides for another potential Senate run in 2024. And Carol Markowitz, a columnist for the New York Post, has teamed up with Desiree News contributor Bethany Mandel for a new book about America's culture wars. It's called Stolen Youth, How Radicals Are Erasing Innocence and Indoctrinating a Generation. And finally, Alyssa Quart, the executive director of the nonprofit Economic Hardship Reporting Project, is out with her latest, Bootstrapped, Liberating Ourselves from the American Dream. Her previous book was the 2018 title, Squeezed, Why Our Families Can't Afford America. Well, some of the latest published books also have literary reviews. Here's a few. The New York Times looks at Sink by Joseph Earl Thomas. It's a memoir of his growing up in Philadelphia. And as the New York Times reviewer says, quote, it's a tough book to read. The author faces verbal and physical abuse, homophobia, and economic disadvantages. He watches, he attempts, he screws up, he tries again. Again, the book is called Sink. And the Washington Post Book World reviews Alexandra Robbins' The Teachers. The reviewer is Melanie McCabe, a retired teacher. Ms. McCabe writes that, quote, 
anyone contemplating going into teaching might be dissuaded after reading the teachers. That is not a disparagement of Alexandra Robbins' book, but rather a testament to its scope, accuracy, and unflinching honesty. Never before, the reviewer writes, have I read any work that so clearly depicts the current realities of teaching in America's public schools. Another book that got a review, in 2012, Mary Eberstadt published Adam and Eve After the Pill. It's been updated and reissued. And the National Review says that the new version, quote, shines a Klieg light on the feral scenes of the present and on the ideological extremism of our times. And according to the review in the National Review, some of Eberstadt's conclusions include that a post-sexual revolution society is a lower commitment society, the vast majority of incarcerated juveniles have grown up in fatherless homes, disengaged young men are far more likely to be attracted to politically extremist identitarian movements. The National Review writes that the, quote, value of Eberstadt's book is not just the acuity of her insights, it is ultimately in the encouragement she gives to readers who sense distressing social trends are bundled together but have difficulty articulating why or how they should be resisted. And that's a quick look at some of the newest books that are coming out. Currently, some of the best-selling books include Senator Bernie Sanders' latest, It's Okay to Be Angry About Capitalism, Michelle Obama's The Light We Carry, and a new book to the list, Isabel Wilkerson's Cast, which examines the social strata and hierarchies in America today. And as always, look for these authors and books in the near future on C-SPAN's Book TV. Also coming up on Book TV on our Afterwards program, journalist Kathleen McLaughlin looks at how and why selling blood plasma has turned into a $20 billion industry. She was interviewed by Stat News investigative reporter Olivia Goldhill. Here's a portion. We export more blood plasma than certain popular farm crops. It's a huge industry. It's a huge export. Um, I had a conversation a couple of months ago with someone who was asking me about the kind of global connectedness of this industry. And they said, is there a country, a developing country somewhere in the world that kind of provides all of the world's plasma? Is there a country somewhere where you can really see, you know, this is the place where we're getting all the plasma? And I said, yes, yeah, it's, it's the United States. I mean, we are the country that has a big enough population and enough of that population who is living on the economic margins that we have become a primary source country for the rest of the world's blood plasma. And a reminder, that Afterwards airs every Sunday evening at 10 p.m. And finally, we want to know what books you're reading. Share with us your reading list or what books you're looking forward to reading in 2023. Simply record an audio file and email it to us at booktv at cspan.org. We may use it on a future About Books. Well, thanks for joining us for About Books, a program and podcast produced by C-SPAN's Book TV. Book TV will continue to bring you publishing news and new author programs, and you can get this podcast and all other C-SPAN podcasts on our C-SPAN Now app. And you can also watch all Book TV programs online at booktv.org.